Hello, my name is Charlotta. This is the School of Pattern Cutting. If you haven't watched before, welcome. And today I've got um, a recording of a live draft analysis I did on Instagram earlier. And I'd like to share one here so you can watch it on a big landscape, which I always prefer for creating and also watching. And I know some of you do too. So the dress I'm looking at is a roughly 1967 Balenciaga daytime dress and it's not the most spectacular, you know, Balenciaga we think, these super conceptual statement pieces. This is a really wearable dress, but being a Balenciaga, Christopher Balenciaga does daytime there in a really Balenciaga way. So there's lots of very subtle, clever shaping, there are seams and no seams in places you don't expect and the volume is created in a really clever and actually relatively easy to copy way. So if you're looking for a slightly a very variable shift dress but this really interesting vintage Balenciaga inspired details then I'm sure you love this dress as much as I do. So let's have a look at it. This is the back view and it's got the really interesting sort of slight bit of volume there and then it's being shaped um, this a belt and there's a French name for this belt and I've forgotten it um, if any of you know I'd please remind me um, it's a sort of similar belt you could often see on coats of the time so it's basically fixed into the side seams and it sort of drapes the volume and adds a bit of shape and it basically looks like um, you're wearing on a classic trench coat, a men's trench coat or a woman's as well but it's sort of slightly oversized Burberry cut which was originally men's wear um, but it's like you have your belt threaded to your loops on the side seam and then you have it knotted at the back again so it sort of hangs down adds a little bit of shaping but it is still quite loose and um, so it's um, if you think about your classic Burberry or Aquascutum if you're really traditional which of course doesn't exist anymore as such so it, a lot of the Burberries are quite um, voluminous the original ones and then what you do is you quite often you would have your belt and then you knot it at the back and then all the volume sort of um, gets sort of not gathered but it gets sort of constricted to the back and I think that sort of reminds me of that style. I'm not sure whether that is the original style but there's also lots of historical styles um, who do similar thing where sort of um, you have like a it's a fake belt basically or a fixed belt which is a nicer term which gathers or uh, concentrates the volume in the place you want it to be. So that's your back. Um, your back in front is just a simple but what I love about these um, daytime Balenciaga dresses is what dart shaping and pleats and seams there are are really considered and very elegant. So this I've seen in quite a few of dresses of his time by him is this angled dart. So you get very subtle shaping. And this is where I always think stuff on the mannequin is limited because I would love to see this on a woman and see if it, if it, if it move, she moves, how it would actually hang because it just does a little bit of shaping from the bust and you can just, you can't even see it properly. But can you see that's basically the dart. It's just slightly angled to, because I think the bust point must be up here somewhere. Um, so it just shapes it a little bit to probably the, just about the upper hip. And when you can see there's a second, what well, looks like a second, and this is where we, you can see a pixelation of my um, book. You can see the second, there's a second dart here. Um, and then there doesn't, doesn't look like there's a side seam. And then at the front, You've got a seam all down the center front, which interestingly, if I try to zoom in more, looks like it's left slightly open at the front top, 
and then it's also open the center front and so it's got really interesting details so i'm going to start drawing it out now i've talked about it um so let's have a look at the front first and i've also got a side view so i'm going to start with the front first and then slightly move around and i hope can you see oh, i hope you can all see this because it's um always tricky and if any of you have seen it in the Balenciaga Museum, I'd love to know whether my um, ideas are correct or not. And what I love about um, Balenciaga is that the armholes are cut off, not shaped um, the way you think they are traditionally. And hello Beth, no worries about being late, I've only just um, started drawing, I've been talking too much, so now I will... Now you here I can actually start with the proper drawing. So it's got a a slightly wider crew neck or boat, you might call I I wouldn't call it a proper boat neck. Um but it's a slightly wider and slightly lower than your normal crew neck. And then it's got quite a narrow shoulder. And again, I would love how to see how this shoulder actually sits on a real person. Um because I assume it sits just inside um where your shoulder seam is so it's flattering if you have this too close let me get my blocks if you have this too close to the edge like your armhole i think it's going to look really unflattering um it i always think it makes at least it makes me very heavy i think it's always when you have a style like that if you move in it's much more flattering otherwise it just um looks a bit heavy and there are certain brands where i can just see it's not this is like just talking high street brands but i can tell it's not made for me because the shoulder is in the wrong place and then it makes me look um just quite um, it just because I've got wide shoulders for my build anyway, it just widens my shoulders even more, which is of course great about making your own as usual. Um, is that you can put that shoulder exactly where you want it, where it flatters your um, your collarbone, you know, at bone that where your where your muscles from your arm come out, all that thing. You can put it exactly where it suits your body and flatters your body shape. And then the great thing as well, you can put it so it hits, hides your bra strap exactly. So you can combine you two with practicality as well. And then this is where it now gets interesting. So this is all quite straightforward, but this is Balenciaga, so it won't stay straight forward. This is why I chose this really simple style because it's so interesting. Um, we have, of course, our center front seam, which I think is like look like look like it's slightly sort of notched so it's slightly um open so it's i think it's completely straight but they basically they up to for example here they have have stitched each side of the center front to the facing rather than together at the center front so it gives you a sort of little um opening it's always quite elegant it sort of reminds me as well of men's wear trousers this actually has for me quite a lot of men's wear details um but of course balenciaga also picked a lot of um sort of as a lot of people who, who are true genius they do look at history get inspired but reinterpreted so i think you can always see maybe slight influences um and then the center front is sort of stitched together for a bit, not that much. So you can see it's, that's your bust point here, sort of up there. It suddenly opens up and it's got a, a, some sort of pleat. So the opposite of a box pleat. Um, and that sort of seems to go roughly to the hip. No, actually, sorry, I'm not, um, to the waist, I would say, just underneath the waist. And then, of course, that gets, that's, then means, of course, again, I'd love to see that moving, is that as you move, that must open slightly. So it'd be really, really interesting. So it's, in a way, it's a back to front. Do you know how you get a pleat on shirts? 
to enable you to move. This is the opposite. So I would really love to see how that moves um, when you open it. Uh, and Bias Cut Woman, if you don't follow her, she makes amazing 3D um, versions, um, digital versions of historical clothes. So if she makes this, I'd love to see how this actually looks like. And then if your bust point is here, you got... I don't think he's used, it's definitely not a fitted garment, but he's used some of bust shaping but and a little bit of waist shaping as well to create these two darts which go roughly to the upper hip I think. So from here to here and then this is going to be slightly tricky to draw. The armhole actually is not a normal shape, it's angled. And I'm going to show you the side view so you can see it as well. Can you see how it looks like? So, again, what is quite fascinating, so you can see it's angled and then it angles back into a beautiful back. But what is quite interesting where it hits that corner is actually either another dart. I think it's a dart. Um, on here you can only see the top of it. But in the other image, you can actually see it's another dart, which is exactly the same length as these. Um, so that is your shaping, basically. So that is, so it's not a complete straight dress. There is, if you think about that's your basic bodice block, which has shaping here for the waist. It's got your bust shaping, and it's also got shaping the side seam. Um, so we know there's no side seam. If you look at our side view, absolutely no side seam, and even more excitingly, for us pattern nerds, oh no, there is a, there is a center back um, seam. I thought there might have been none. I would have gotten really exciting, excited, um, and I think you might be able to get away with our center back seam, but I wouldn't want to tell Christopher Balenciaga how to do things, so we're gonna do it his way. Um, so there's just two pattern pieces basically and they're the si uh, combined at the sides and therefore because we're missing that side seam where we're doing our shaping therefore um, Balenciaga adds some of the side seam shaping not all of it into another dart slightly more forward so I think that is along this line roughly very notches but what is really fascinating, but can you see this? And now this is, but it might just be how it's hanging on the mannequin. It looks like the outer layer has a little bit more volume than the inner layer. But that might just be how it's laying. So I think it might have, because can you see even on here, you can see the outer layer sort of just hangs completely straight. And then there seems to be maybe, I would imagine this is fully faced. Um, Or lined so I think it pulls it in. Does it all make sense so far? So uh, it looks like there's a little bit more volume on the outer layer and the inner layer. Um, do let me know if there's anything you want me to go into more detail. But then the rest of the dress is, if you look down, it's completely straight so there's no more shaping there so that means the side if you quickly draw the side out um, and I'm gonna draw the mirror image because otherwise it's gonna look confusing and hello Sarah thank you for joining um, so the back you can see it's got slightly the and now if you know me already, you know I'm really bad at drawing sides. And I should have learned it by now. Um, the front is basically, you can see, it's a sort of normal armhole. And then you got that beautiful angle. And then at the front, it just sort of, you can see this is actually the side. You can really see how clever the shaping is. Because what it does instead of, if it was a shift dress, it just go down straight. But this goes in slightly. So this is what this dart and that dart does. It sort of very subtly shapes the fabric at the um, 
front and one at the back and yes this is back to front so I'm drawing a mirror image of that so it makes sense for my drawing um, at the back you got this beautiful fixed belt and if any of you know what it's called do please let me know I've forgotten what it's called it's got a name it's got a French name I've worked for French company so I should know but I have forgotten because if you also know me you know I've got really bad short-term and long-term memory but anyway so you can see how we have our front seam there and we're gonna have our center back seam and all the shaping of this dress to make it slightly more fitted and for it to skim our bust line rather than be boxy so this isn't actually boxy it skims and that's achieved through these darts nothing else um, and then the back we got a little bit more shaping but it's volume shaping so the back is actually oversized so you can see there's extra volume there um not that much it might actually just be if you think about your back so that sort of volume is could be our dart so I think it's just a little bit of extra volume it might just be sort of maybe an inch which doesn't actually continue all the way to um, the top by the look of it so this might be draped so if you did it for your normal one what you could do is that you close your shoulder darts and that would give you a little bit of volume but it might be a bit too much because then it's completely straight um, so this is one of those where you might actually um, just widen it a little bit and then put it on and then you redraw it that line so it fits but how it actually looks like I'm going to try to fit in here so you got our center back seam again and I suddenly had a thought that I don't know how you get into this dress. So it could be that you either um, just put it on top over your hat, which isn't very usual for a time. Um, and I, I know I just drawn the whole center back, so I need to draw my fixed belt. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this sort of belt is, it's used, it's a bit like what you use in trench coats. Where you, if you wear the sort of Burberry trench coat, it's a style where you wear oversized trench coat and then you knot your belt. And because it's held together by the loops on the side seam, it sort of concentrates all the volume in the back and pulls it. And that's basically what Balenciaga has done. And it's sort of used on jackets quite a lot, historical jackets. And if you know what I'm talking about, do please let me know. So you can see that is our back so it's quite straight but it's a completely sort of straight the back it looks like it's quite straight and then you actually got the extra volume which is probably just this shaping plus a bit extra um because sometimes if you pivot your whole shoulder dart that can actually become quite eye, li eye line already because it's quite a long one so it might be a bit of a mixture of pivoting the dart or just making it slightly wider and then redrawing the shoulder point to um suit you because of course you don't want it wider at the front um so it's a bit of a i would start with pivoting the shoulder point and working with that and then sort of because it's not a fully fitted dress so you can sometimes do a hybrid of both and move darts and stuff um, or actually what you can also do is um, I have blocks where my I don't have I basically use part of my shoulder seam as ease so you can sort of use a mixture of the two but basically what it means that you use your you have a straight side seam because you haven't got a side seam so then that sort of extra volume here you can see it's sort of just again coming to our hip i think um and then some extra volume so it might be split open um a bit is then gathered back by a slightly tighter belt um and that is 
you can see how it droops so that's the sort of real but when you make this if you make it too tight it's gonna sit um it's gonna sit straight so that but actually what makes that tells you that is that because our outer belt falls down in the middle it's sort of slightly draped it doesn't look completely tight that tells me i think the lining of this hasn't got the extra volume and i think the combination of just a straight so the lining or facing i think it's actually facing because if you look on it's either basically matching lining or facing but whatever it is the back basically the underbody the inner body is completely straight it hasn't got the added volume um and it's really this if i want to use a different color so we can differentiate it's basically this area it's important um so probably from you might even get away with just doing it to your armhole but basically what you need is this area here at the back the facing or undergarment or inner garment or lining needs to not have its extra volume so you would first of all draft this dress like you do the front the lining is probably exactly the same um, and then for the lining at the back you draft it without this extra volume and then on the outer back only you add you either pivot your dart or you add the extra volume and then the combination of a tighter but um inner tighter lining which we're facing which normally would mean it would just collapse and fall forward like it does in the front and um, by combining it with the belt means it's held in and i think the front is exactly the same so again can you see here you can if i zoom it as much as possible so that is your outer and then can you see how the armhole is sort of held to the front so i think we've done exactly um the same at the front where the facing at the front is slightly tighter so again at the front you get this extra volume here in the back again you get the extra it's slightly tighter so it, it forces the volume at the front it's forced into a pleat on the side so it when you wear it the dress completely from the front it just falls completely sorry it falls completely straight and at the back if it didn't have a belt it would do the same it would just fall straight rather than curved but that belt which is yes Wendy it is stitched into the armhole that belt basically in combination with the tighter lining creates these really beautiful pleats um, so that's where the skill is so it's sort of if you so the easiest thing is actually if you make instead of a pleats you have the same volume put into darts so that would be actually probably the easiest one because that way you can use one pattern for both and um, but then of course at the front it needs to be tighter and um, but that is actually how all this really clever volume is created by having it fully lined and then using your lining or facing to force the volume to hang in different ways so at the front it's being forced to become like a sort of pleat or sort of a fold which then makes means the arm or you see at the front is actually a fold so it folds back onto itself which means you got a really beautiful straight edge rather than a curve and the back probably a similar amount of volume is then by the design of a fixed belt forced into these pleats so it's really subtle and if you, you know if you just look at the dress you think Mm, yeah it's sort of quite interesting it's probably just to make a, a a straight dress and then i just you know i tie a belt around and you know what it might actually work but um that's always the beauty of this pattern cutting you can start you can start things quite simple where you literally cut a completely straight slip dress no shaping at all literally two rectangles and then you start pulling it together at the back and you maybe adds a bit of shaping so that would be this dress as it's simples 
um, but if you want to you can do all this really subtle shaping and of course somebody like Balenciaga um, probably would drape it all and that's how you could create it most organically but what I've been trying to do is basically sort of give you a root of how you could do a whole thing in flat pattern cutting. Um, so you use part of your darts but you angle it, um, you replace the side seam with another dart, um, so you just move your shaping towards the front and then your part of your shaping, because we're not having a fully shaped garment, we're having a skimming dress, part of your shaping at the back is becoming that volume um, and then the slip dress underneath is probably a bit more fitted um, because it doesn't have the pleats and then of course the most intriguing element is that really fascinating center front pleat so um, just to finish off so the front has like um, I think the front looks like that so it's either all the way or it's something like this and then it has like a pleat so it looks like this so as you move it sort of opens up so the opposite of a men's shirt at the back but again it sort of is so slightly historical it reminds me slightly you know on no, I'm not a costume designer um, or fashion historian on is it Tudor but you got all these opening ones and then they put different fabrics behind. This is a bit like that, so if you move it will open up. Um, and I would love to see this in motion to see whether this is functional, so whether you actually whether it opens up, or whether it purely adds a little bit of depth. So rather than just having a center front seam, which is you know, this is Balenciaga after all, a little pleat adds a bit more interest. And to finish off, I'm quickly going to sketch out how the pattern piece roughly looks. So we've got our front, center front, and this is opposite on how I normally draw quotes. And then we've got our darts, and I think our darts are something like that. And then we also, we got that sort of volume. And then you of course got a dart here on the outer and then it just goes down and then the back again the back is complete is the back completely straight i think the back armhole is completely um more or less straight and then it sort of gets pulled in and then that's your center back so you can see the whole that's one pattern piece it's just the center front and the center back seam and then you got your belt attached there and you got your sort of extra volume you can see the extra volume doesn't actually go all the way to shoulder so shoulders fitted which is why i think it's sort of pivoted out of of course it's draped if it's Balenciaga and um, but if you pass and cut it you some you know you use some of your bust shape and um, your shoulder shaping to create that but the whole thing is just one pattern piece you cut out as a pair and this is how I think the Balenciaga um, dress summer dress might work and um, of course the great thing is about making your own you can pick whatever details you want to inspire you as always, Balenciaga doesn't disappoint. So I hope you enjoyed this draft analysis of Balenciaga as much as I loved looking and analyzing it. I'll be back again live on Instagram with another analysis and I put the recording on here afterwards as well. If you ever have any questions, do head over to my Instagram and just um, comment or send me a DM with any questions or suggestions or comments and if you want to learn pattern cutting with me I'd love it do check out my free step system which is also in the description and um, which is a really good way to getting to know me and my way of teaching but that's it for me today do please give me a thumbs up if you liked it and thank you so much for watching bye